Good afternoon. My name is Jim Mayola. It is Tuesday, September 7th, 2010, and we're in the Community Media Center's Express Studio. And it is my distinct pleasure to be interviewing Miss Jeanette Fry. And Jeanette's going to tell us a little bit about herself. Let's start off, Jeanette, with um, where were you born? Well, actually, I was born down near um, BWI. Okay. Back when Washington Boulevard was just a little boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was from this area. She okay. lived up around New Windsor. Mm -hmm. And she had gone to Baltimore, I think, in 1940, and where she met my father. And they stayed around the city in Baltimore County for a little bit. And mm -hmm. then they just came up here in 1954 to New Windsor. Moved back to Carroll County in 1954. How old were you in 1954 when Six. you moved back up? You were six years old. Had you been in school yet, or no. were you, you were getting ready to go into first grade? I started first grade at New Windsor. Okay. Um, what a wonderful time if you were going to have to move to move, you know, before right. you had started school and <laughs> right. made friends. Yeah. Um, I, I think, from what I gather uh, with the pictures there at New Windsor, I, I'm thinking that the year I started was the first year they opened the new part, mm -hmm. because I was in a new part, and my first grade teacher was Miss Yan. Um, I can still remember a lot of my friends, even though I moved away at the end of the second grade. Mm -hmm. But um, Cleta Morlock and Linda Lampert and Tanya Staub and Dale Buffington, all of us were friends mm -hmm. in the first grade. And there were others. And sure. I'm waving. That's okay. <laughs> Ms. Fry, so you, my you went to school in the um, schoolhouse that is now the, the the library building, yes. isn't it? It's yes. the library headquarters. Well, when I went there, it was grades 1 through 12. Mm -hmm. Of course, there wasn't any kindergarten. Right. Um, my biggest disappointment of the whole time, well, I, I had a couple of adventures there. I think maybe our class was among those who got the first polio shots. No kidding. Um, I'm not sure when they started, but mm -hmm. I thought it was around 1954. Mm -hmm. And they took us all down to the cafeteria. Right. And we all got our polio shots. Mm -hmm. And I came back to the room and I threw up. Oh. <laughs> well, we had a bathroom in the room, so I made it to the bathroom. Yeah. And then when I was in the, I guess I didn't get another polio shot till I was in the third grade. Mm -hmm. And I fainted after that one. I wasn't good with needles. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I got better. Okay. Um, my biggest disappointment there was that when I was in the second grade, I was supposed to read the story of the Three Billy Goats Gruff mm -hmm. while my classmates acted it out. And wouldn't you know, two days before I was supposed to do it, I came down with the mumps. Oh. This was back in when the doctors came to your house. Right. My two brothers, oh, three of my brothers and I, all had the mumps at the same time. My oldest brother had them so bad, he had them on both sides. Mm -hmm. And he had to sit in a chair to, to breathe. He, no he was really, he was in bad wow. shape. <coughs> but the doctor came to the house and treated my two younger brothers and I. We only had it on one side. Mm -hmm. And I, he told me I couldn't go to school. And I cried. I begged and pleaded. I said, I've got to go. I've got to read this story. He said, no, you may not go to school. Well, you couldn't. You were contagious. I didn't yeah. care. I, I wanted know. to go read my story. <laughs> oh. So, um, Now, how did they treat mumps in those days? They just let it run its course. Yeah. He yeah. Didn't, I don't remember taking medicine. He yeah. just kind of laid around the house. Right. I guess I don't even remember being in a lot of pain. Right. You know, yeah. my brother remembers because, uh, like I said, he had it mm -hmm. on both sides. Um, I don't know if there's anything to this or not, but when I was a child, we I had mumps, and uh, they said that when you can eat a dill pickle, you know that the mumps have gone away oh. because it was it hurt your throat so badly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't eat dill pickles. Mm -hmm. I guess mom figured it out. Mm -hmm. Probably when we got up and started running around the house, she you knew were we were well. done. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. We didn't have a very big house. We. Um, Matter of fact, we bought our house on half an acre mm -hmm. on Rowell Road. And I, if, I don't know when the last time as you've been back Rowell Road, but it's that real tiny house there. Okay. We paid two hundred and fifty dollars for it. No kidding. Now it needed a roof, okay. and we moved in it was with a the old upper. roof in. Oh yeah, yeah it yeah. was a real fixer upper. Didn't have a front door. Mm -hmm. Mom put a, hung a canvas there, okay. and my uncle and my father put the new roof on. Mm -hmm. It still wasn't a big house, mm -hmm. but it was dry. Sure. 
<laughs> now, now what, what kind of work did your mom and dad do? Did your mom work or was she My a mother was the homemaker. Homemaker, okay. And I am so grateful for that. That's the one thing that's changed in this county that I think is not good. In our culture. In our culture, yeah, really yes. Um, my father at that time worked for the Baltimore Transit. That's how my mother mm -hmm. actually met him. She mm -hmm. rode his bus. Okay. He, had, he was back from World War II. Mm -hmm. He had served in Turkey. Um, well, on the Turkish border, he, mm -hmm. he was um, the sergeant of a truck company there. They took supplies into Russia. Right. Um, but he worked for the Baltimore Transit, which the Baltimore Transit was a union company. Mm -hmm. And at that time, and actually I just finished reading this book about FDR, and I realized this was kind of a nationwide thing. He made the union so powerful that all of a sudden they had strikes everywhere. And I didn't realize it was everywhere. I knew it affected us mm -hmm. because it seemed like every couple of months my dad was on strike. No and he didn't want to be on strike. Right. He was happy with what he was making. Sure. He wanted to go to work. Yeah. But they threatened to shoot him if he crossed the lines, yeah. you know. And back then the unions were pretty violent. And very Maybe strong, they are yeah. today too, I don't know. But they were powerful. Mm -hmm. So got to the point where, <coughs> excuse me, at one time, they had been on strike for so long that we, ha we had no money coming in. Mm -hmm. So he quit. Mm -hmm. And that was the last time then he worked for the Baltimore Transit. Right. He went into trucking after that. Okay. Um, and from that time forward, he drove a, a long distance mm -hmm. moving van. He liked moving vans. Oh, okay. My father loved to work. He couldn't sit still. Yeah. <laughs> he had to always be doing something. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but now, we didn't have a television when I was little. You know, TVs kind of became available in 1948, which mm -hmm. is about the year I was born. Mm -hmm. And I had a few relatives around Baltimore especially who did have televisions, and sometimes we'd watch, oh, what was that black cat's name, the crazy one? Was it Crazy Cat? Or Maybe. Wasn't Felix? so best. Felix. Felix, okay. Felix the cat. Yeah, okay. Remember Felix the cat and Popeye? Right. But the darn TVs jumped all the time. And so you didn't really sit around watching them, if, even if you had one around, because it got annoying. You mm -hmm. couldn't stop them. Yeah. And we didn't have a TV at all. But in the summer especially, my mother would take us kids out in the yard, and we'd sit around while she told us stories of her childhood. No kidding. I think that's how I became interested in history. Wonderful. She told us. I, I, knew, I knew her life inside and out at the time. I still mm -hmm. know a lot mm -hmm. of things. I, I mean, I keep... I write them down now because mm -hmm. I'm more prone to forgetting, but she had a very interesting life, I thought, mm -hmm. and um, we enjoyed that. We enjoyed that time together. Can you tell us an example of one of your mother's stories? Um, well, oh boy, I wouldn't know where to start. She grew up around Oak Orchard. I don't know if you know where that is. That's apparently, from the genealogy I've done, my family lived in that area for generations. Mm -hmm. <coughs> she was born in a little old log house. Okay. They were pretty poor. Um, and she was the youngest, and she wasn't born until her mother was 42. Wow. So my grandmother was actually born in 1888, and I didn't get to know her very well, mm -hmm. because by the time I came along, she was pretty well sick in bed, and mm -hmm. she died shortly thereafter. Right. But um, I guess the one thing I remember when I was working on my paper about the Depression, I asked Mom what she knew about it. Mm -hmm. She said, to be honest with you, I didn't know we were in a Depression until I went to school and they told me. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And, but you know what? Lots of other older people told me the same thing. Right. But they lived out in the country. Exactly. And she said, you know, we never had a lot of money. We grew all of our own food. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they always raised two hogs. They couldn't afford to raise a beef, she said, mm -hmm. but they raised two hogs. And um, there was a little country store that was probably about a half a mile's walk mm -hmm. away. And they would get things like dried beans. Of course, sure. they dried a lot of beans from the garden, too. They really did. But they'd get dried beans and flour and sugar mm -hmm. and things like that. And her father was what they called a day laborer. And if you check genealogy records, a lot of men were day laborers mm -hmm. at the time. And he would just go work for whatever farmer needed him. Mm -hmm. But in the wintertime, she said that you, know, what you always took care well, let me back up a little bit. She said her father was a real fanatic about the garden. Mm -hmm. He could not have a weed in the garden. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I look back over it now, there is wisdom in that because once the weeds take over, you lose your Ab productivity. Absolutely. And if your family's depending on what's in that garden, mm -hmm. you'd better make sure there's no weeds in it. Yeah. But it, you know, drove mom crazy because she was a kid and she had to pull those weeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she said he was very fanatical about keeping his hog pen clean. 
but um, in the winter time, after the hogs were butchered, now they did put, and I remember being there for butchering day, they still did it yet when I was a child. Um, they made the sausage, and they took that and fried it off and put it in crocks, sure. and then they poured lard over the top yeah. and covered it, and then mm -hmm. they could use that for a long time. Mm -hmm. But when those things ran out, and I'm talking probably about January, mm -hmm. you know, by the time you've used up that stuff that's not going to keep a real long time, exactly. they had to live off of what he could shoot. Mm -hmm. And she said he was a very good shot, mm -hmm. but he would not waste a bullet. If right. he didn't think he could hit it, he wouldn't shoot. Right. But she said they ate things like rabbit, mm -hmm. which she said was pretty good. She enjoyed the rabbit and um, snapping turtles. Mm -hmm. She said she enjoyed the fried turtle. Mm -hmm. But she didn't enjoy the groundhog. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she said at one point they actually had to eat a groundhog. She mm -hmm. said that her mother, you know, had cooked it a couple of times and kept pouring the water off right. and then she roasted it. Right. But she said that's something she would never want to eat again. Yeah, not but by choice. You didn't have a ch you didn't have a choice really. But back to what you were saying, <laughs> uh, people didn't notice that there was a depression because they were self-sufficient. They were self-sufficient. Right. And they didn't have a lot of money, so mm -hmm. they couldn't lose it anywhere, right. you know? They weren't invested in any stock market. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made money that just kept them going from right. one month to the other. Yeah. And yeah. Then you put up everything you could, yes. you saved as much as you could, and then you hoped that it would tide you over till the next spring right. when you started over again. And you didn't waste anything. Mm -hmm. It's not like today's throwaway society. Yeah. Right. Mom said if her shoes got a hole in, they sewed them up. Mm -hmm. You didn't get new shoes every year, right. which she feels that that kind of deformed her feet, which it may have. Mm -hmm. But um, that was the way it was. And mm -hmm. of course, it was mostly hand-me-down dresses. Mm -hmm. um, I could spend all day telling you mom's stories. Yeah. Well, that's great. It gives <laughs> us an idea, a flavor of, of how you grew up, because the values that your mother shared with mm -hmm. you are values that you carry today that you share with others. And that's very important. It's an important part of who we are. Well, exactly. And she was religious. She, and her, she was very religious. And mm -hmm. she and her father had to walk to church. Her father never drove a car. Of course, cars, she was born in 1924. So mm -hmm. cars were around the county, mm -hmm. but out where they were, she said people mostly traveled in horses and buggies. Mm -hmm. And she said that they went to the Church of the Brethren over there on 31, right. what's that called, Edgewood. Right. But she said they usually walked, mm -hmm. she and her dad. Um, she said her mother's health never seemed to be good. And of course, being 42 when mom was born, by the time mom was 10, she was 52. Mm -hmm. um, she wouldn't, she c felt that she couldn't walk to church. Mm -hmm. And so if they had to walk, it was just mom and her father who went. Mm -hmm. But they had a love feast where they would get together and wash each other's feet. Mm -hmm. And she said her mother would insist on going there, sure. but she would get a ride. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have never seen them. Now, Mom told me that she was baptized over in Sam's Creek into the Church of the Brethren mm -hmm. and that she was dunked three times. Um, Jeanette, you mentioned that um, you uh, came into New Windsor in 1954. <laughs> Wasn't that the same year that they built the bypass? Do you recall? Which bypass? The bypass is now 140. You know, was I think it was later. Was that 54 or 64? It may have been 64. I think it was 64 okay. because I remember um, a boy who was, or a, a man, construction worker who was mm -hmm. killed there, and I mm -hmm. was a teenager at the okay. time, so I'm thinking that must so have been 64. So it must have been 64. So in 54, what kind of condition were the roads in, in Carroll County? <laughs> well, you know, we lived in Reisterstown for a while and always rode up to my grandmother's house a couple times a week usually, and that road seemed so long. Of course, the cars seem so slow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's funny because I, they weren't bad. They weren't like they are today, but they mm -hmm. weren't bad. Uh, as a child, they didn't seem bad to me. I do know that almost every time we went out, we got a flat tire. I think the tires have improved. It okay. seemed like you couldn't go very far without getting a flat. Wow. Be pretty well prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, that you're going to change a tire when you went somewhere. Of course, there were probably nails on the road, too. I know. Probably so. Yeah. You know. But the longest part of the road was between Westminster uh, on 31 mm -hmm. and Lee Master's house. <laughs> because every time we went past, my mother would tell me the stories of Lee Master's. Okay. And uh, 
I, she probably told us kids, you know, there were five of us kids in the car probably driving her nuts. Of course, Patty wasn't born yet, so there have been four of us. Okay. <laughs> probably driving her nuts and she would tell us this story because we get real quiet and we just <laughs> peek up over the windows <laughs> to see if we could see him because we knew we were going to see him riding across those fields and his um, you know wagons beating his horses <laughs> 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 so we had the Lee Master story mm -hmm. going across we had a lot of ghost stories she told us mm -hmm. um, you know I guess there were things that she heard and up where they lived in Oak Orchard um, there was a <coughs> excuse me a farm near them and I don't remember who lived on the farm at the time but supposedly one he had killed one of his slaves mm -hmm. of course they had slaves up there mm -hmm. back when that happened mm -hmm. not when my mother was a child right. but um, you know there was and then there was a family graveyard up over the hill and there was always some sort of a ghost story attached to mm -hmm. that and I can't remember that one. I think there's something about a white horse that we see there. I don't know. So stories were a very important part of your oh childhood. Yeah. Uh, stories that were like folk tales that people told, kept their histories alive, and told about families, and and um, it was a part of entertainment as well. Exactly. I'm exactly. sure you look forward to that. We did, mm -hmm. and. Uh, well, Mom liked to read to us, too, and mm -hmm. any time she could get a hold of some books. I remember one point she was reading Charlotte's Web to us, mm -hmm. and I could just hardly wait each night, because she'd only read one chapter right. at a time, yeah. and I could hardly wait until she got to the next chapter, because that's so interesting, but yeah. you didn't have a TV, mm -hmm. and um, she was doing, she was, she loved, Mom loved kids, mm -hmm. and, you know, all of us can honestly say that we were loved. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's another thing that's probably lost on the generations today. Well, I'll tell you something else that's interesting you just brought up, that your mother li liked to read, and she read to her children, and I bet she instilled in you a love of books. She did. Yes. And so you probably have read to your children, and it goes on and on. Yeah. And it's a wonderful thing to, um, for people to understand how important it is to read, but also to enjoy it, to, uh, to share knowledge that way. So you had mentioned, now uh, maybe I got this wrong, but you said that by the time you got to the second grade, you moved away? We moved to Manchester. Okay, so you moved from New Windsor to Manchester. And that's where I grew up. We stayed there. That must have been traumatic. It at was. At the age of uh, seven, eight years old. It was tough. Yeah, because <laughs> you had all your friends. Yeah. And you were leaving your friends behind that you just named a few moments ago. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it's funny, I met up, my best friend was Cleta, and recently we met up. Mm -hmm. But before I go there, let me finish something about my mom. When you sure. talked about her reading books, she, um, her father died when she was 11. Mm -hmm. Of course, her father was 10 years older than her mother, and so this is something that was, you know, probably in the cards, but mm -hmm. there weren't any Social Security or right. ways sure. to take care of anybody. Yeah. and. Her mother told her she really couldn't afford to take care of her anymore, which kind of hurt my mother because she felt that, I think it, mom never said as much, but I think in her heart she felt that she should have found a way. So she sent her to live with her uncle, mm -hmm. who was not a very nice person, and he worked her really hard. When mm -hmm. she was 12 years old, she was cooking breakfast and dinner for like 10 hired hands on his farm. Oh and it was her responsibility to get up and start the wood fire, mm -hmm. go gather the eggs, and get breakfast ready. Well, before she got breakfast ready, she was expected to go out and help milk a few cows mm -hmm. because it was all hand done. Sure. Sure. And then she had to clean everything up and get to school. Mm -hmm. Well, she loved school. Yeah. And she was very, I think she was very bright in school. I have some of her school books. Mm -hmm. <sighs> she wanted to go on to high school, and he wouldn't let her. Oh. He told her he. He couldn't afford to buy the books, right. and so she. Uh, he, he, his words were, women don't have to be educated because they're only going to be mothers, and you don't have to be smart to do that. Now, approximately what year would ha this have been? This was, sounds like Probably it was... Probably about 1934. I was going to say the mid-30s, and um, at, at, at that time, there was no mandatory education. I mean, a, stu a no. student could leave. I, I guess yeah. so. She was 13 when he yeah. took her out. Yeah. She, I think she finished either the seventh or eighth grade. I don't mm -hmm. think she went to the eighth grade because I think eighth grade was part of high school. Mm -hmm. Eighth through eleven, I think, right. was high school. And it only went to eleven then. Yeah. yeah. Now, in, I think it was 
right when she started school, which I guess would have been around 1930, no, about 1928 mm -hmm. or 9, mm -hmm. they opened Liberty. Mm -hmm. They consolidated the little one-room schools, mm -hmm. and so she went there. My aunt actually had gone to the little schoolhouse right across from Oak Orchard Road. Mm -hmm. Somebody lives there now, but mm -hmm. it was a little schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. But Mom went to the consolidated school. Right. Um, and she lived on McKinstry Mill Road mm -hmm. with her exactly uncle. That's exactly where that is. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he made her drop out of school. And after she grew up, um, had a couple of kids, her mother told her one day that her teacher had told her that she should keep her in school and let her go to college because she was very bright. Mm -hmm. And she never told never. mom that. And she never had a chance. No. Yeah. Sounds so like she had a rough childhood. I mean, she, she did. almost didn't have a childhood because she had to work right. so hard. But one thing that she swore she would do is make sure her kids were educated. Mm -hmm. And she, every one of us has at least one college degree. Mm -hmm. Well, except my one brother who passed away. Mm -hmm. He had enough college credits. Mm -hmm. He could have had one. Right. But he said he didn't see any need to get one. Okay. But the rest of us But he might. had the opportunity. He had the opportunity. Sure. Yeah. Well, he wanted to quit school at one point. <laughs> and Mom, um, he was 16, of course, and he knew everything was there was to know, and he was going to join the Marines. Mm -hmm. And Mom said, uh, well, let's just see about that. I have a feeling she talked to the Marine recu recruiter and the, and the guidance counselor. You know, mothers have a way of doing this. So she took him to meet the Marine recu recruiter and everything, and, and the Marine recruiter said, you graduate from high school first, then come back. So he went back and finished school. Very good. That's the last she ever heard of it. Very good. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But my sister has two degrees. My younger brother has one bachelor's and several associate's degrees. Um, and all, my, all of us have a degree of some sort. And, and that, that meant something to mom. That was her, to her, that was her proudest accomplishment mm -hmm. because Absolutely. she wasn't allowed to finish school. Yeah. So you moved to Manchester. Manchester. Okay. And so you started third grade in Manchester? I did. You were about eight years old then. Do you want to know why we moved to Manchester? Sure. There was a couple of reasons. First of all, my father had a hard time. He was kind of like a gypsy. He had a hard time standing still. But after we moved to Manchester, my mother said, no, no more schools for these kids. They're yeah. staying in the same school. So Good. we stayed in Manchester. But he wanted a farm. He always loved a farm. His father had owned a farm in Harford County when he went in the Army, and his father was an alcoholic, and he drank so much and didn't pay the taxes on the farm and sold a tax sale. Mm -hmm. And my father could never get that out of his crawl. Mm -hmm. He said, I had enough money I could have paid those taxes sure. if he'd just told me. Yeah. So he was determined he wanted to have a farm. Mm -hmm. So we bought a farm on Garrett Road, which um, we loved. It had Tarzan swing. We had indoor plumbing. Wow. That was something we didn't have in New Windsor. Sure. That's the big thing That's nobody had around here. Yeah. You know, out in the country, you mm -hmm. just didn't have. That's right. You were lucky if you had electricity. Mm -hmm. My aunt and grandmother never had electricity until about 1960. And so no electricity, no indoor plumbing, yeah. so you had outhouses, and, and no telephones. No tel Oh, heavens yeah. no. No telephones. We lived without cell phones. Right. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. <laughs> how, how could we have gotten by? I don't know. I don't know how we ever got doctors to come and see us, but we did. Yeah. I guess somebody went in and said, could you come and sure, see us? Sure. It was like $3 for a doctor's visit. Mm -hmm. They would come out to the house. Yeah. Patty was born in that house at New Windsor. And Dr. Stone was the doctor who delivered her. I think he's from Westminster. Charged my parents $30 wow. to come out and deliver Patty. Mm -hmm. She was the cheapest baby she said they had. <laughs> Um, and she's doing just fine. Oh, we have yeah. yes. Well, she was wanted. You know, that one, I think that is one thing that set our family apart. Ma, we knew Mom wanted us. Mm -hmm. She didn't have to tell us. We yeah. just knew. A lot of love. Yeah. Yeah. She was a good cook, too. She mm -hmm. cooked a lot of good stuff. Good. Um, but anyway, the particular reason he wanted to be in that area was there had been some big robbery. And I don't know where the robbery was. Uh -huh. But he had worked with this guy at the Baltimore Transit whose son was involved in the robbery. Oh, okay. And they could never find where they buried the money. Mm -hmm. Well, he told my father that the money was buried somewhere up around Garrett Road. <laughs> so <laughs> <coughs> when this farm came available, you know, Daddy thought, yeah. I'll go up there and find this money. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy liked to dig, too. He had been a gra grave digger at one time during mm -hmm. the Depression. Yeah. Um, he also worked for the CCC. Mm -hmm. 
And I've got to check that out because I know there's a site you can go to now and get information about that. Right. But um, we, us kids, liked it because there was a little fish pond out back, which mm -hmm. my brothers were always falling in. And I honestly believe they were falling in it accidentally until I grew up. And mm -hmm. they told me one yeah. day, and I, oh, <laughs> I couldn't figure out how they couldn't walk past yeah. that pond without I'm falling, falling in. in. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a Tarzan swing that we'd stand on the hill and just swing over oh. the valley. And we did that all day long. But as soon as we moved in, um, excuse me, Chris Campbell came to see us. Have you ever heard the name Chris Campbell? No. Well, I'm not getting in trouble for this, am I? No. <laughs> okay. Um, he was an abortion doctor. Okay. He had lost his license to practice in New York, mm -hmm. and he owned a farm back on Garrett Road. Mm -hmm. And we found out afterwards that he had tried to buy our farm mm -hmm. from the people who lived there before us, mm -hmm. but she wouldn't sell it because um, they were pretty religious and mm -hmm. they knew what practice he was in. Right. Apparently he had like a pipeline to D.C. Mm -hmm. My mother said that at Christmas you would see all these big Lincolns and Cadillacs with senator tags coming mm -hmm. in, bringing all their girlfriends okay. up from their Christmas parties. I don't know. I don't remember that, but that's what mm -hmm. Mom told me. But I know that Chris Campbell did live there. Mm -hmm. And we had only lived there about two weeks before he came to our door and wanted to buy the house. Right. And Mom said, no. Yeah. You know, we love it here. We don't want it. Yeah. <sighs> so a couple weeks later, he came back again. And finally, he stopped coming. But the bank that we financed our house through, the banker started coming. And I, after I grew up and started to sell real estate, I realized that my parents had been had. Mm -hmm. And I, I figured it out when I was at a settlement in the same bank one day and I saw his picture on the yeah. wall oh. with Chris Campbell. Mm -hmm. And I thought those two were in cahoots. Mm -hmm. They were friends. So the next thing you know, the banker comes and says, you know, I made a mistake on your loan. Um, we had financed it through VA. Mm -hmm. He said, we've, we've appraised it with the land and VA won't let you do that. You have to pay me an extra $1,000. Unbelievable. Well, my parents didn't have, you know, yeah. everything they, they had yeah. gotten from our house sure. in Windsor, they put yeah. into that farm. Sure. Now, we got a farm mm -hmm. with 10 acres for $5,000. Wow. Great deal. Yeah. If they could have stayed there, they'd have done really well. But after, Chris Campbell didn't come back anymore. Mm -hmm. We didn't see him. Mm -hmm. The banker came mm -hmm. about once a month. I need $1,000 or you have to move. I need $1,000. you got to get yeah. this money. Well, you know, when I think about it now, had it been that serious, they wouldn't have given us that much time. That's it right. would have been immediate. Yeah. But after I found out that he and Chris Campbell had been best friends, mm -hmm. I know that they were in cahoots. Mm -hmm. So finally, you know, he, he threatened foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And my mother didn't know what else to do, so she went back to Chris Campbell and said, if you want to buy it, you can buy it. Yeah. So he paid her what we paid for it. Mm -hmm. We didn't make any money. Yeah. But she... You know, she was afraid she was getting foreclosed one. Mm -hmm. She couldn't afford a lawyer. Right. They didn't have oh legal no. aid back no, then. Of course not. So basically they were shystered out of their farm. Mm -hmm. Now, Chris Campbell, if you go back and look at some of the newspaper articles from the 1950s, late 50s, he was arrested off and on. He would come into Maryland and stay a while. He, his object was to buy up all the farms on Garrett Road so that nobody else would come and go in there. Um, I think he pretty well did it eventually. Mm. I think he got most of them. He didn't get, I know the Backerts lived there and they wouldn't sell to him. Of course, they owned it free and clear. They mm. weren't paying a mortgage. Right. Um, I think everybody else pretty well sold to him and mm. he, he pretty well got what he wanted. So what did your family do then? You had to move again? <laughs> we had to move again. We spent that summer in a trailer. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, probably 40s and 30s too, but I don't remember, we had a lot of gypsies that would come into mm -hmm. the county and do the um, farm labor. Mm -hmm. And Manchester had a couple of spots where they would set up their trailers. One was down there on Route 30, just below um, where Theoretz used to be, Theoretz mm -hmm. Market, okay. below D between Deep Run mm -hmm. and um, Botmas Valley. Mm -hmm. There was a place where some of them set up there. Okay. and. And if you cross the Pennsylvania line, where St. David's Church is, mm -hmm. okay, all that woods was a trailer park. Oh, I didn't know that. It yeah. was. Well, that's where we ended up setting up our little trailer for the mm -hmm. summer until mm -hmm. we could find the house. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the, the back part, all the gypsies would come and fill in in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we stayed until we found a house. And then we, we rented pretty much for the rent, because that wiped them out. Yeah. You know, it kind of took their reserve. Sure. But we stayed in Manchester. We didn't, we didn't leave there. And mm -hmm. I, <laughs> talking about the transition, I went there in the third grade, and of course I knew no one. And mm -hmm. Everybody I tried to play with wouldn't play with me. Oh. <laughs> I spent the first two days just standing around, you know, wishing somebody would play. And finally I started to play with another girl who seemed to be standing around. Yeah. It turned out that she had just moved there that year, oh, too. Okay. So we became best friends. Yeah. But I found out a couple of years ago that there were t lots of kids that had gone there for the first year because up at Banhaw Hill, mm -hmm. they had their own little school. They had a one-room schoolhouse okay. right at the end of Ban Hall Hill and Deep Run Road. Right. The Stickles family lives there now. There's a house mm -hmm. that was a school, and all the kids up around Ban Hall Hill went there until okay. 1957, I guess, or 8. Wow, okay. it's, let's see. I guess I went there in 56 or 7. Mm -hmm. Whatever year I went there is the year that those kids came down. So mm -hmm. the school was all new for them, too. But you know, mm -hmm. when you're in the third grade and you're looking for a friend, you don't know who's new and sure. who's not. Yeah. But, what else? <laughs> so, did your dad stay in trucking then? Yes, he did. Okay. He, stay, he kept doing that. And so you went to uh, grade school in Manchester. I went up to the eighth grade because, okay. it, well, when I, I guess uh, North Carroll was built in 56. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when I graduated in 66, we had a 10-year celebration. Mm -hmm. So up to that point, 12th grade was up there as well. But the year I went there, it was 1 through 8. Okay. And kindergarten, I don't guess, I don't think kindergarten came yeah. along until maybe my kids were little. Yeah. Yeah, I suspect that was in the 60s. Yeah. Well, there were some yeah. kids who went to kindergarten, but the rich mm -hmm. kids went to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. The rest of us didn't. Yeah. <laughs> now, high school, where'd you go? North Carroll. North Carroll. The old North The Carol. old school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then you said you had a degree, so where did you go to college? Well, I went to the community college first, okay. then I went to Western Maryland. Here in Carroll County, mm -hmm. the community. Now, is it in the location that it's in now? No. When I first started, it was over at Robert Moton. Okay. I took my first couple of classes there, but it took mm -hmm. me a while to, to get finished because mm -hmm. um, my first husband and I divorced, mm -hmm. and I had two little kids, mm -hmm. and he didn't pay child support or anything. Yeah. so. You know, I, I started school with the intention of finishing, and actually, if if everything had worked out on, I was I was trying to get a grant, and they all the paperwork was filled up, and they wanted me to go ahead and start and wait for it, and I said, I can't do that because I have no way of paying it. Exactly. So I, I kind of decided that I had to take care of the kids first, mm -hmm. and when they got a little older, sure. then I would go back. And you so did. So I did. But I went back after I put my oldest daughter through college. I mm -hmm. went back. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, before we get to college, let's let me ask you something else. What kind of um, you you grew up in um, Manchester and you came of age during the fifties and the sixties, mm -hmm. I guess, early sixties. Mm -hmm. um, what you didn't have a television? Did you have a television? Well, yet? we had a television by that time. Now, okay. when I was about nine or ten, I guess. My parents went and bought a brand new television from Sears. Color or black and white? Black and white. Okay. And how many channels did you get? Not many. Yeah. Well, they didn't come on until a certain yeah. time in the morning. Right. You know, if you turn it on too early, you got that sign yes. and yeah. buzz. Yes. <laughs> but the darn thing jumped all the time. Mm -hmm. And she finally said the heck with it. She took yeah. it back, and then we didn't have TV again for a while. No kidding. But we didn't miss it. You know, I had, yeah. I had three brothers that were close in age. Mm -hmm. um, and we played all the time. And what, we, what kinds of things did you play? Well, we went outside mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. We play, I played football with them because mm -hmm. they didn't want to play dolls or anything. Sure. So <laughs> I played football with them. When I was real little, um, probably two or three, I remember my brother, my older brother, would ride his little tractor around, and I would dig in the mud and make mud cakes. I'd take those big <laughs> leaves, yeah. and I'd... Make some what I make sandwiches mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. to eat when he came in from his farming. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we rode our bikes. We played spud. Oh my goodness, we played spud. Now what spud? You don't know what spud is. I don't know what spud. Is. You throw the ball up. Okay. Well, you give everybody a number first, okay. and then and you you say what the numbers are between. You know, it's like 
how are, like if you've got eight kids, mm -hmm. you're going to be one through eight. Mm -hmm. And you throw the ball up in the air and call it a number, and everybody runs except the person whose number you called. Right. And they run and catch the ball. Okay. When they catch the ball, they say spud. Uh -huh. You have to stop. Okay. I think you say spud. I think mm -hmm. you say spud or you mm -hmm. say I got it. I forget. Mm -hmm. I haven't played it for a while. But everybody stops. Mm -hmm. And then they have to spell out spud, S-P-U-D, period. Mm -hmm. Always put your period there because it gave you an extra step. Mm -hmm. And then they have to throw the ball at somebody, and if they hit them, then that person's it, and they got to throw the ball up in the air. No kidding. Okay. And, yeah. and we played Red I Rover. Played have, you, you? have you played yeah. that? Uh, that's yeah. for kids all over. Yeah. But we played baseball. Well, mm -hmm. so we played <laughs> we played it like softball. But we always mm -hmm. used a baseball sure. because they didn't have softball leagues for girls. They right. had little league for boys. Mm -hmm. But I played with the boys because. They didn't have everybody else to play sure. with, so I learned how to play ball pretty young. Yeah. And I think, you know, Patty was um, sports queen, most athletic, and I, I think probably it had to do with all the things that we played mm -hmm. all the time. And so you also, <laughs> I guess, you played tag. Oh, freeze yeah. tag. Sure. We we ran constantly. Mm -hmm. Very athletic. <sighs> Very. Well, you know, there are a lot of kids today that they they say need Ritalin and things like mm -hmm. that. I think if they could get out and play the way we did, mm -hmm. they would sit still when they I had a chance. I bet they would. <laughs> because we would go out in the summer, and you know what, it was safe to do this. Sure. We would go out in the summer, and we'd ride our bikes all over the place. Mm -hmm. We'd play all day. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever bothered us. Lots when we were of fresh finished air. playing, we came home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we did do one thing we weren't supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> in Melrose, there was um, an old canning factory. Mm -hmm. You know the story behind that and the railroad bed and right. all that. Okay. <coughs> I think it closed in thirties or forties. Okay. Not sure, but it was sitting empty when we lived there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And we were forbidden to go there, and we were especially forbidden to get in that pond behind it. <laughs> so we had to do both. <laughs> oh. we, and in the middle of the canning factory is this big. I guess you call them a cistern. I don't okay, know. It's, yeah. it's a big round walled thing. Mm -hmm. It went right down. And there was water at the bottom, but you mm -hmm. could just hardly see the bottom. It was deep. I guess oh. it was their well supply. I guess. I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. Uh, how we didn't fall in, I don't know. But then we got in the pond, too. <laughs> and, you know, Patty and I talk about this, uh, this sometimes. We can't figure out how Mom didn't know we were in that pond. If she knew, maybe she just needed us out of the house. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But we stopped getting in the pond for two reasons. One, Patty almost drowned. <laughs> one of the, na I didn't, I mean, I was in there at the time and I didn't see her going under, but one of the boys with us mm -hmm. did and he pulled her out. Good. Um, and two, we saw this huge snake Ooh. in there and that finished it. We didn't want to yeah. go in anymore. Yeah, that's enough. But we didn't get yeah. polio or anything, you know. Yeah. Polio was the big thing back yeah, then. I mean, sure. All of our little Newsweek papers that we get at school would show these kids going in and out, iron lungs. You remember that? My Weekly Reader. Yeah. 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 We remember we yeah. took those tests once a month. Mm -hmm. We had a Weekly Reader test mm -hmm. once a month. Yeah. It's another thing that happened to me. When I came to Manchester, they put me in the lowest groups of everything. And I did pretty well at New yeah. Windsor. And I yeah. came over and I, I would have all my work finished and I'd be sitting there watching this other group. And I thought, oh, man, this stuff, I didn't realize. Yeah what had happened. But I only had to take a few of the weekly reader tests mm -hmm. where I got 50 out of 50 and, and then they then put me they up. And then they knew, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about college. You started off in the community college, but then you moved on to Western Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, when did you graduate from Western Maryland? 2000, okay. I think. Yeah. And what was your major? History. Okay. So you've been fascinated with history, even as a little girl. Well, you know, it's funny. We were talking about this the other day. I, I was just talking about this with my son this morning, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we were just, <laughs> my sister used to be a pretty liberal um, person when it came to politics. And I've teased her about it because she voted for Jimmy Carter and I had a fit. <laughs> I think I was born a Republican. I've always been interested in the conservative cause and as a small child, I can remember we were in the car. Uh, my parents talked about political things too, and I, I was real quiet and shy when I was little. I guess mm -hmm. I took more in than I spit out because mm -hmm. I remember a lot more than the rest of my family remembers. But 
they were very unhappy with FDR because they thought that um, that he was too involved with communist mm -hmm. and too too friendly with Stalin. Mm -hmm. And I remember them talking about that. And of course, we'll come back to the pumpkin thing mm -hmm. too. But um, as we were going under this railroad bridge down Owings Mills, you know where I'm talking about, uh, down near the fire department, where the on fire department is on now. The old road. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Right. That was the only road. That was the road. Yeah. <laughs> but as we came under there, the car radio was on, mm -hmm. and they talked about the Rosenbergs being executed. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there thinking, "Oh my gosh, I think, I think they were electrocuted, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was the way." That I think you may be right. Yeah, yeah. and I was sitting there thinking how terrible it was. And of course, it was because they were spies. Mm -hmm. And there's been some question. Of course, I read a book a few years ago. It was written by some former KGB agents and somebody from this country, and they pretty well verified that, no, they were really doing what they said they were mm -hmm. doing. But it was such a terrible thing because the husband and wife together. Correct. And that's, yeah. that's what yeah. um, upset people. But, you know, when John Kennedy ran for president, I didn't want him to be president. I didn't want Jimmy Carter to be president. I didn't want, I was always for the Republican candidate, even before I could vote. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it was. <laughs> it's interesting that this Republicans are a very strong Republican effort in Carroll County, of course. We're mm -hmm. very conservative here. And I find that the older I get, the more conservative I tend to become. And I'm not sure why, what that's <laughs> about. But well, have you not heard the expression, if you're not a liberal when you're young, you've got no heart, and if you're not a conservative when you get old, you've got no brain? Now, that's what I was telling my son. <laughs> I said, I guess he's so, he, I said, and you know, you've always been conservative. He said, yeah, I guess I got no heart, huh? I said, well, I guess that's, I don't either, because that's what it says for me. <laughs> so but what did you do after you got out of college? What kind of work have you had? Well, you know, most of my life I sold real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when I was taking those first classes over at the Robert Moton Building, um, at that point I was intent on getting a teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. But I, I knew I was reaching the point where I was going to have to decide because my girls were getting to where they wanted to do things. They wanted to be involved in sports sure. and other school activities and majorettes and stuff like that. And I couldn't see how I was going to work get them where they needed to go and go to school, mm -hmm. plus afford it, you know, because I was paying for each class as I went. Sure. So I ran into a couple of friends there who told me they were taking the real estate course. And they said, oh, why don't you come take it? And I got to thinking about it, and I thought, you know, if I sell real estate, I'll have more time with my kids. I can plan my own schedule better. So I went ahead and took the real estate course and got my real estate license. And I did that then until the girls grew up. Mm -hmm. And it worked it's, out okay? It worked out great because sure. I could set my own schedule. There were times I could take them with me if I needed to. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, <laughs> let me ask you something about, you made a reference a little while ago to a pumpkin. Oh. Tell me the pumpkin you story. You don't know the pumpkin story? I don't know the pumpkin story. Were you born story. in Cal County? I was not. Oh. Well, this is what broke everything. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to read a book. It's called Blacklisted by History. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck's now I can't remember his name. I'm drawing a blank here. I'll, I'll yeah. think of his name in a minute. But Whitaker Chambers was editor for Time magazine. Okay. okay. He was a communist. He was a spy. But he converted and became a Quaker. And when he converted, he decided to come clean. Well, mm -hmm. I think they were, doing, they were trying to blackmail him in some way. And so he decided to just turn everybody in. Mm. Because, um, and, you know, I haven't read his book for a long time, but... Anyway. So we're so talking about during the late 50s then. This is the MacArthur yeah. era? This is the early 50s. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe late 50. 40s. Okay. Um, so we're going back pretty far. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It, I don't think it was during World War II. I think it was mm -hmm. post-World War mm -hmm. II. And I think it involved um, the um, nuclear program, mm -hmm. I believe. And I th the Rosenbergs were involved with this too. Mm -hmm. Alger Hiss. You've mm -hmm. heard of him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Alger Hiss was the big guy. He was, and the, he's the one, well, he's one of them in the book that I said I read about the former KB, KGB agents writing, where he, he absolutely was guilty, but, you know, he claimed to be innocent. They all claimed to be innocent. Mm -hmm. But, <coughs> excuse me, Richard Nixon, <laughs> what's this guy's name? <laughs> who was the, the guy who worked on the, um, the Un-American Activities Committee. 
Shucks. Are I you can't. talking about McCarthy? Yes. Yeah. What's his first name? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm talking a blanket. I've yeah. got his book laying at my yeah. house. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, they actually, okay, Whitaker Chambers bought a farm on Bachman's Valley Road. Mm -hmm. And he had taken some of these um, documents, mm -hmm. probably microfilms, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mm -hmm. guess they had microfilm mm -hmm. at that time. And they had hidden them in pumpkins. And so when Richard Nixon and McCarthy and these other big waves from yeah. Washington came out, they actually drove out to the farm on Botanist Valley Road and he took them down to the pumpkin patch yeah. and showed them where the things were hidden. I remember seeing that on a newsreel when I was in grade school. Okay. And they pulled them out of the pumpkin and opened them up and showed them. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize that was Carroll County. Well, it's right, the farm is right there. I want to say at the end of Sawmill Road, but I'm not sure mm -hmm. that's right. I, I could mm -hmm. drive there and I would mm -hmm. know where it was. You had to go back a dirt lane. Mm -hmm. That's where he lived. Patty's mother-in-law knows them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might want to take that out too. Okay. She knew them because her parents were friends with them. And they're yeah. mentioned in his book. If yeah. you've ever read Witness by Whitaker Chambers, he talks about it. Um, so well, that's a, a pumpkin story. It's a small world. And see, my mother would tell us that story mm -hmm. over and over again, too. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying we got interested in history, I think. All of my brothers and my sister, now Patty mm -hmm. and I both have degrees in history. And my other brothers don't, well, actually my younger brother, I think my, my younger brother <laughs> was fascinated by wars. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's the kind of person you can ask him who fought what battle. Right. What did they win? You know, who won? Yeah. How many men were in their group? You know, right. He knows all that mm -hmm. because he was totally fascinated with history. But you see, Jeanette, you, you grew mm -hmm. up in, a, in an area of the country that is just saturated oh, with yeah. history. I mean, there's history that, that goes. There are, are families around here that have been in Carroll County since the 1700s. Oh, yeah. And so, the, you know, they cherish their, uh, their history. And so uh, it's natural that you would be um, enamored by history and, and because you were living it. But the other thing is, my parents both loved history. Mm -hmm. And you ask us what we did when during the week. I told you what we did. But on the weekends, we were either at the Smithsonian Museum or Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. Or they liked to travel to upstate New York. I don't know why they liked it up there, but we went up there quite a bit. But we spent a lot of our time in museums. Mm -hmm. um, by the time I was in the fourth grade, and our class actually took a trip down there, and for many of my classmates, it was their first time down. Sure, I could have given a guided tour okay. because we went there about every weekend. If we weren't there, we went to the zoo, mm -hmm. which was free. Of mm -hmm. course, that was the other thing. My parents took us a lot of places that were free. Mm -hmm. And sure. back in the days when we were going to the Smithsonian, didn't seem to be as big as it is now. It seemed, I think <laughs> the buildings were closer together because mm -hmm. mom would turn us loose. And yeah. you know, my brothers always had to go the natural. No, they wanted to go to the medical history because there I was a was big leg ask in there. You if you had seen that, yes, they yeah. wanted to see the big leg that had elephantiasis, so they had to go in there. But um, it was safe to do that. Mm -hmm. You couldn't take your kids to D.C. and turn them loose anymore. I know. But so you would go to, you, the whole family would oh go, yeah. and you would just take different museums and go out and look, yep. and then just agree to meet back for lunch. Well, either that or maybe Daddy followed us mm -hmm. and Mom followed somebody mm -hmm. else. I don't remember. Yeah. But I, you know, we didn't always stay together because the boys wanted to do certain sure. things. Sure. Yeah. Let's see, the medical museum was over next to the castle. I don't Yeah, it was over behind the castle, the castle yeah. The, it's still there. What's the big red oh, building, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but that was before they had the Air and Space Museum. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Air and Space Museum That's wasn't now. there. Natural uh, History was there. Botanical Gardens were there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and the Baltimore Zoo was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had beautiful gardens that mm -hmm. you could go, they were all in housed in this one building. Right. And it was, yeah, it was incredible. And it was fun to go there. It was free. Mm -hmm. We would, you know, everywhere we went, Mom would pack a picnic lunch. So it didn't cost us mm -hmm. a whole bunch for food, sure. and it didn't cost us anything to get in. Mm -hmm. As we got a little bit older and the drive-ins set up, of course, out where Westminster High School is, was the Ridge Drive-In. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we would go out there, but it was a little more expensive to go there. Most of the time, we'd go up to Cross Keys, and it was a dollar a car. 
Cross Keys. Now that's uh, outside of Tawny Town. Hanover. Okay. Pennsylvania. Oh, in Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. there was a drive-in outside of Tawny Town. That was. That was the Monocacy. Okay, Monocacy. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. didn't go up there too often. Yeah. Living in Manchester, we usually mm -hmm. went did things in Hanover. Right. Yeah. Um, but Cross Keys was a dollar car load, mm -hmm. and so she would pack a picnic lunch, and yeah. we would sit out and. You know, eat our lunch waiting for the movie to start. Great entertainment for a family oh, at a yeah. very reasonable cost. Yep. Yeah. All lost. It's just pretty you much You know, it is. Away. Now, my daughter lives out in Utah. And of course, that's a big family area out there. Mm -hmm. They have family centers everywhere mm -hmm. where you can go and they've got indoor swimming pools with sliding boards, they've got mm -hmm. climbing things, mm -hmm. they've got basketball courts, mm -hmm. they've got ping pong tables. It's like two dollars a person to get in, wow. but they've got them everywhere. That's something we ought to have around here that we don't have. But when I was growing up, you didn't need that because yeah. you had so many other things. Right. But let me ask you this: I understand that uh, in the fifties and the sixties, they used to have a lot of teen centers in <laughs> uh, Carroll County, we in did. The, and so there were places that young teenagers to go could go that were safe, uh, and they could get together and socialize. Yes. And we had one in Hampstead, mm -hmm. but I wasn't allowed to go. <laughs> my father forbid me to go to the teen center, and I wanted to go so bad because all my friends went to the teen center. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I know what goes on at those teen centers, and so you're not going. <laughs> so the one night I was really kind of, I started to cry, and I was sitting on the porch crying, and my younger brother, the one who wanted to quit school, mm -hmm. came over and he said, you know, what's wrong? I said, Daddy won't let me go to the teen center. He said, oh, I'll go talk to the old man. <laughs> <laughs> so he went in and talked for a while, and he came back out. He said, you can go. I said, oh, but i got to go with you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> well, he was 14 or 13. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, now, you know, this is how all my, my girlfriends started to like my younger brother mm -hmm. because he was kind of cute, mm -hmm. and, you know, he liked to dance. So I got to go to Teen Sound that night, but it wasn't. It wasn't the same. <laughs> nah, it no, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, yeah. you know. But it was safe. I it mean, was there were safe, yeah. you were chaperoned. Oh, yeah, you had there were adults there. But that said, mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody smoked in there, the chaperones mm -hmm. and the kids. That it was, was the, the thing. But that was our time. And they had a dance in Manchester for a long time up above the fire hall mm -hmm. every Friday night. And <laughs> you had to <laughs> go through the smoke. Swim through the smoke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there, there was a dance there, and there were adults, mm -hmm. yes. And it, it was safe. Nobody yeah. got in fights. Right. You know, we just danced. Yeah. That was... Now, was it records or live music? It was records. Records, yeah. Teen centers were records, yeah. too. Now, um, there were roller skating rinks in, around. They opened the roller skater rink, skating rink when I was 12 or 13, mm -hmm. and I went every Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 50 cents for admission and 50 cents for skates. Wow. And... Sunday afternoon they had the matinee from 2 to 5. Mm -hmm. Harry Morefoot opened it and he used to drive this car that looked like a roller skate. No kidding. We loved seeing him come down oh. the road because of his big blue roller skate. Yeah. It was really was neat. Now, did he play organ? Is that what? He I don't well, he didn't play. Yeah. It. There was organ, organ music. I don't yeah. know that it was live. Right. Now the old skate rainbow skating rink yeah. I think had a live organist. Mm -hmm. And I had gone up there when I lived in New Windsor. I guess my school had a skating party or something. Yeah. My mother took me up there. Yeah. yeah, she was great for taking us to things mm -hmm. like that. She, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but she saw to it that we got to do things that other kids well, were doing. We, lot, lots we of were pretty privileged, actually. Yeah. Lots of things you could do in the family, though, living mm -hmm. in this community that didn't cost a lot of money if you just looked. Exactly. Yeah. What about Westminster, downtown Westminster? Did you ever get down to uh, oh, Westminster? G.C. Murphy's mm -hmm. at Easter time when they had all the little colored chicks in the window. Really? And ducks. Yeah. yeah. We used to buy them, mm -hmm. bring them home, and most of the time they lived. I mm -hmm. guess they said they stopped selling them that way because the dye was not good for them. It was killing them or something, well, but ours usually lived. And I don't think most children, <coughs> well, most chil a lot of kids lived in the cities. They didn't know well, how to take care no, of that's animals. that's true. We so took that ours was, home, yeah. turned them loose. Sure. And they were fine, because you know how to pe <laughs> feed them, and they had plenty to eat. Well, we had banny roosters mm -hmm. over at New Windsor. My father liked the little tiny chickens, mm -hmm. so we had banny roosters. Well, I shouldn't say banny roosters. We had one rooster and, and banny hens. hens. Yeah. yeah. Now, what was Westminster like in the 50s and the 60s? Um, hmm. Well, it wasn't as big. We had G.C. Murphy's on that corner. 
um, Benny's Kitchen. Do you know where Benny's Kitchen was? Mm -hmm. um, okay, you know where Harry's Lunch is now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Benny's, there's a, an insurance company or something. Right. Right, that was Benny's Kitchen. Okay. That was the big restaurant. Mm -hmm. Then across from him, where they widened John Street, was Harry's Lunch. Okay, right, because it was on the other side yeah. of the road. Yeah. Um, I liked going there, and the Carroll Theater. Mm -hmm. I remember going there in 1955, I think. Snow White was being shown for the first time after mm -hmm. being away for a while. Mm -hmm. The theater was so full mm -hmm. that they sat us on the floor up and down each aisle. No and I kidding. thought nowadays you could never do that. No. Yeah. The fire marshal would never allow oh, no. that. No. <laughs> but Amazing. the treat shop was right across the street, so yeah. you go in and get your treat. And then where go where Ernie's is now? Yeah, I, yeah. I guess Ernie's. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, now, G.C. Murphy's, did they have a soda fountain in there? Do you remember? <sighs> I don't think they had a soda fountain. Yeah. But when you walked in the store, it was just um, the first two aisles. There was a glass case across the front and back maybe 30 or 40 feet. Mm -hmm. It was all filled with candy. Mm -hmm. wow. and then, of course, So kids loved that. We did. Mm -hmm. Right there on the corner, you know, it's been torn down now, but I guess kind of in front of where Baumgartner's is, there was a little H.L. Mills gas station. Mm -hmm. And every time you bought gas, you'd get a little card, and then you could um, exchange it for dishes. No kidding. That's how we kept dishes in our house, because we broke them all the time. <laughs> oh. But we got our dishes yeah. and our glasses there. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't spend as much time in Westminster. I, I do remember Myers Meat Market over there. Ying was it Myers or Yingling? It was Yingling's. Mm -hmm. We used to go there and buy this big hunk of bologna that mm -hmm. we would sometimes take on picnics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was good. Um, in Manchester, they had a car store that was a department store. Mm -hmm. And in the front, you could buy clothing and things like that. And in the back, it was a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And upstairs, they had toys, but they only opened that at Christmas. No kidding. You couldn't buy toys except for like jump ropes yeah. or... You know, things like that, right. dolls and all that yeah. other stuff you could buy at Christmas. No kidding. And they would open it up at Christmas. Yeah. <coughs> wow. Very they, we used to go in there and get ice cream cones at night. Mm -hmm. They would dip them, you know, mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Now, um, Westminster, I understand, was a center of social activity on the weekends. A lot of people would come from the outlying areas and come into town to do their shopping and socialize. Well, yeah, we, now that I think about it, we came to Westminster sometimes because they had um, a store called The Hub mm -hmm. that had pretty nice clothes, but mm -hmm. then they had a Hub Annex. Mm -hmm. And you know where the little alley is? Um, David's Jewelers used to Longwell, be on the corner. Yeah. Longwell. Right. Yeah. All right, back in the back, mm -hmm. the co-op was on one side mm -hmm. and the Hub Annex was on the other side. And Mom would go in there and buy us socks and underwear. Mm -hmm. Because it was about half price. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. half what you'd get yeah. at the store. Sure. Um, but then she didn't shop at the co-op much. I don't know, maybe back then you had to be a farmer to go there. I'm not sure. I think there was a membership involved. It might yeah. have been. Yeah. We usually went to the A&P, which mm -hmm. is up where Wheeler's is. Mm -hmm. She didn't like Acme, which was across, across the street. Across the street, yeah. We had to go to the A&P, so we did come in to go to the A&P. Mm -hmm. um, Right, it seems like we, down at um, the Armory building, it seems like we went to see Santa Claus there one time. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the Armory on right. Malcolm Drive. No, no, yep. no. You're talking about the old Armory on Longwell? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have three of them now. <laughs> yeah, the no, this was the only one yeah, at that okay. point. Yeah. Um, that was the other thing. At Christmas was the only time you got an orange. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't... I guess you maybe could get oranges other times, but uh, I don't know, maybe us kids, we're funny about fruit. If it's not sweet, we don't want it. And I guess, you know, now that I see the seasons for oranges, mm -hmm. we know that they kind of start in oh, November and mm -hmm. go through January. Right. But I don't remember them being in the store, but I know when we went to see Santa Claus, we got this big yeah. orange. Big navel orange. Yeah. Which you could break into sections and share. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we each got one. Yeah. <laughs> But that was kind of, that was a real treat. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Patty, you have seen many changes in this county. 
I have, and I'm, I said Patty. I'm sorry, Jeanette. Jeanette, you've seen many changes in this county, and um, what have been the most profound? What do you think? Um, probably the building. Um, you know, the big thing that I was disappointed with when I was little. I loved trains. Mm -hmm. We lo and Mom would take us on the trains a lot. Sometimes we get on the train in Reisterstown and ride it to New Windsor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think, I think we took one of the last trains there because she had heard that they were going to stop passenger service, and I think she took us up there just to make sure we got one last ride. Mm -hmm. I and loved riding trains. And they did. They stopped they passenger stopped service it, yeah. in the late 50s, wasn't it? 56, 57? Early 60s, I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, you know what? It might have been late 50s. Yeah. Yeah, it was right but, about and that it was, time. And it was such a big industry. In, in, it was. In Westminster, for one thing, they had trains coming through all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, for a long time, they stopped all the trains. And then they did start up using mm -hmm. uh, Midland, I think, started mm -hmm. something. Um, that I guess that kind of sparked a change. Um, at the influx of people, the building has just been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at some of the places I lived where I, we were the only house there, mm -hmm. and now, well, even where my husband and I are, 25 years ago, there was nothing there but us. Right. Now there are 90 houses behind us. Wow. I mean, I think, the, and when I was little, I could walk up the streets of Manchester and say hello to everybody and know who they were. Mm -hmm. I don't anymore. Of course, some of them may be kids I grew up with, and I don't recognize them yeah. anymore, but it's kind of nice to have a small town. I think our population, even with the surrounding community, was about 2,000 at that mm -hmm. time. But I think it was probably the 70s. And of course, I sold real estate, so I mm -hmm. shouldn't complain, because um, I sold a lot of these people their houses. <laughs> well, and we see population growing everywhere, so this is not unique yeah. to Carroll County. It's, it's not, but it, it was a change right. for people who grew up here. And mm -hmm. I didn't see it. And it's, or and didn't it's sad. Yeah. The big employer was Black and Decker, and mm -hmm. I remember when they came to town, mm -hmm. I mean, we had people who moved here from Tennessee mm -hmm. just to get jobs at Black and Decker. Sure. Um, my brother went there, and of course he had to go to Vietnam in between. Or did he go there after he got back from Vietnam? He might have gone there after he got back from mm -hmm. Vietnam. That was another thing that upset everybody. You know, we, there were several boys I went to school with who were killed there. Mm -hmm. And we worried about my brother. I had two brothers there at the same time. Um, you know, that, that had an impact on everybody. And my mother, and I didn't know it at the time, but we had lived kind of across from the post office for a, quite a while. And um, she got to know, um, she had to recognize the car that came to town mm -hmm. from the Army to tell people their sons oh had been killed. My. And she said every time that car pulled up, her heart would skip beats. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was pretty tough. Yeah. And that was a time when everybody knew everybody, so somebody yeah. was going. Yeah, exactly. Was of facing the tragedy. One of our neighbors, mm -hmm. Jimmy Zumbrum, was actually one of them that they came to. Of course, he had gone back for three times, mm -hmm. three tours of duty. Wow. I guess my first job. What was my first job? Well, I actually had a waitress job, but I think my first job was at the canning factory. Mm -hmm. you now we had a canning factory on every street corner back then. Yeah, it was a big industry in the county. And down here, where the Carroll County Times building is, mm -hmm. of course, the big thing too was people complained that the migrant workers didn't have good living places, and so Shriver's built these block houses. Mm -hmm. They were like, well, they were hooked together, mm -hmm. but they were individual block houses, sure. and they were. I think they had a couple of bedrooms and a bathroom mm -hmm. and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. And he built all those nice buildings, and then like two years later, they closed it down, tore them all down. But um, I went to work at the candy factory in Hampstead. Mm -hmm. And I forget who owned it, but I lasted two or three days. It was hard work. <coughs> you better believe it was. You mm -hmm. had to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and you didn't leave till midnight. Mm -hmm. Hard and work. I went there during corn season when they had these machines that you had to put the corn in. Of course, it shot back at you, and when you took your scarf off at night, it was stiff. Yeah. But you had to have everything clean to be back sure. there. Sure. Well, I had a neighbor who 
she died recently, but she was she was about 85 when she died, and she was telling me that she worked at those canning factories all summer long, all through her wow. youth. And I'm thinking, how in the world yeah. did you do it? Hard work. That was hard work. Yeah, hard work. That was a huge <laughs> industry in this community, though. Yes, it was. The farmers provided the uh, produce for the canneries, and the canneries mm -hmm. provided labor for many, many people that lived here. And it actually, the canneries being here actually changed the complexion of the kinds of farming that we did. Probably. Well, mm -hmm. over where Lee Masters lived, mm -hmm. Schreiber's owned all that when I was little. Mm -hmm. And all those, where all those apartments are, they were all pea fields and mm -hmm. maybe string beans. I just remember the peas. Hard work. Yeah. And nothing was done by machine in those days. It was all by hand to get it into the cannery, and then it was done by machine yeah. in the cannery, the cleaning and the packaging and the processing. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's another thing that kind of changed in the county. I mean, it's nice to go to a mall and not have to get in and out of your car to walk from store to store. But there's some charm missing, you know. In Westminster, you had Mathers, you had the shoe store, and I'm seeing Tom's face, and I can't think of his last name. Eckerd, maybe. I can't remember. His father owned the short shoe store there on Main Street, and Betty Barrett and her sister Jerry owned the um, dress shop. And uh, you knew the owners, mm -hmm. you know, well, except for G.C. Murphy's. We didn't know the owners there, yeah. but um, it was kind of nice. And in Hampstead, you had Bob's Variety Store, mm -hmm. and for a while he had um, he opened a dress shop. They called Bob's Carrollton Shop. Mm -hmm. and that's where we got a lot of our clothes. And then Walmart came along, and I love Walmart. I can't, yeah. <laughs> but it's not the same. No, it's it, it was, I don't like big stores. Our whole culture has <coughs> changed, though, and we see that happening in a lot of other, er other areas besides yeah. retail. I mean, we see it happening all over. Yeah. So. I guess our communications changed, and you know that's for the better because there was a time of day if you moved away from home, you probably didn't see or talk to your parents anymore. And both my girls moved far away from home, so I'm, I'm appreciative of telephones and mm -hmm. texting and computers and things and trains and, mm -hmm. well, I don't ride trains anymore, but airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> I would ride a train. I'd love to ride a train, but it's so expensive now you can't. Well, airplanes are awfully expensive as well. Not near as expensive as trains, yeah. trust me. I've That's checked because I would mm -hmm. love to take a train and, mm -hmm. and go those places. Yeah, what a shame. Mm -hmm. What a shame. Different world. Any other stories that you've forgotten to tell? Oh, I'm sure there are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I keep, I'm kind of our family historian. I've written most everything down, and I keep telling everybody to give me their view of things, and I'll get mm -hmm. it. But <coughs> well, you're always welcome. We Go ahead. Well, well the, the communities were small. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody knew everybody, and we were all pretty much friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess each community had their bully, and we had our bully, too. But, <laughs> you know, we stayed away from him, and... Um, got along well with each other and you know you knew everybody in every house and so it wasn't a fearful thing where you know don't go in that house mm -hmm. or I think of course everybody came to our house so it didn't make any difference I think when you have the most kids and that's the other thing this is going back to the education thing um, my father bought us a set of bought us a set of encyclopedias mm -hmm. when I was very young mm -hmm. probably in the fifth or sixth grade and I didn't realize that everybody didn't have encyclopedias um, until all my friends started asking if they could come to my house to sure. work on reports. Sure. Um, but my father loved books, yeah. and so we had encyclopedias. And then he bought well, he most uh, the ones that he just bought outright. But then when the stores they used to have these bargains where you buy a mm -hmm. book a week, mm -hmm. it was a couple dollars a week. Mm -hmm. He'd buy us whole sets of them. So mm -hmm. we always had plenty of. Uh, you know, my parents, I guess, were kind of traditional at that time, too, because Daddy was the breadwinner, and Mom took care of the house. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever suggested it should be any other way. There's something different <coughs> in our society. It's yeah. So, yeah. Do you remember what your rent was when you were growing up? A lot of times we, we don't know what the, you know, I don't. What the prices I, were. Well, we didn't pay rent. Yeah. Most, if we bought a house, mm -hmm. except for the one we bought on Garrett Road, yeah. that one we did finance through VA, and I don't know what the payment was. Mm -hmm. 
but we paid cash for the one because you couldn't get loans. Mm -hmm. Now my father got the VA loan because mm -hmm. he had served in World War II, but right. you didn't get loans like you do today. If you didn't have a whole lot of cash and if you yeah. didn't know somebody, it was no yeah. use to ask. Right. So you either paid cash for it or you didn't buy it. Another difference in our society, now um, anybody can get a loan for almost anything yeah. and credit cards everybody has. In those yeah. days there were no, no credit cards. No, you paid for it. Yeah. Now you could, most of the grocery stores would let you run up a tab that mm -hmm. you paid at the end of the week. Sure. But, yeah. um, well I shouldn't say most, I know some of them did. But, mm -hmm. um, but no. again, it was based on, they knew you, Yeah. they knew you lived in the community, they knew you were a regular customer. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I guess the other thing was, everybody smoked everywhere. That, that was the big thing, and I remember this one little gas station um, where the guy, you know, sold gas on one side and then he had bread and candy and stuff on the other side, but you couldn't buy bread there because it smelled so much like smoke you couldn't mm -hmm. eat it. <laughs> but, you know, he smoked all the time. and. Mm -hmm. People smoked wherever they went. Sure. That was the end thing to do. Now, my father quit smoking. You know, this, a lot of older people say they didn't know how dangerous it was when they were young and they got hooked, but yeah. my father smoked, I guess, when he met mom. I remember, I sort of remember him smoking a little bit, but he quit when I was three. Mm -hmm. And mom said that he was getting up and throwing up blood every morning. Mm -hmm. And he finally said, you know, I think it's those cigarettes. Yeah. And he threw them away and never smoked again. Wow. So he knew, mm -hmm. and I, I think other people knew too, mm -hmm. they just chose to ignore it. Mm -hmm. But it was just, and you know, it was a rite of passage when you were turned 16. If you smoked, so what? Everybody did. Yeah, everybody yeah. did, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, let me ask you this, and, and first of all, let me thank you, Jeanette, for coming today and, and telling welcome. us your story. You're welcome to come back anytime. If you have other stories that you'd <laughs> like to tell, you are most welcome. And if you'd like to interview other people that you know, we, we encourage that as well. Um, you've had a lot of experiences yourself. You've raised children. You've been a child. If you were to offer some advice to a young person who was getting ready to start out today, say somebody that's getting ready to get out of high school and start a career, or somebody that's finishing college and getting ready to start a career in a family, what advice would you give them? You know, it's funny, I didn't tell you many stories about my kids growing up, did I? You know, my kids grew up in a different generation, and they had a whole lot more things out there tempting them than I have. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I appreciate about my generation, at least in Carroll County. Mm -hmm. We were sheltered. Mm -hmm. As a 12th grader, they took us to the gym and showed us this movie. Honest to goodness, as true as I sit in this chair, I had no idea what I had just seen. I, uh, one of the boys happened to know a little bit about drugs, mm -hmm. and so he told us that the girl, I think, had been taking heroin or something, right. I can't remember anymore. Right. I didn't know what I was seeing, and sure. I didn't have any idea why they showed it to yeah. us. I guess now they were showing it, you know, when I, when I figure it out, I guess they were trying to tell us, don't do this, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was about. I had mm -hmm. no idea. Yeah. Of course, till my girls came along, drug use in Carroll County was increasing. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. They didn't, I hope they didn't get involved in it. They did, it was a passing thing because they never got right. hooked or anything, you know, that, yeah. that was something that, but then I was close to my kids too. Mm -hmm. We went to church together and everything we did, we did together. But things were different for them. They had a, they faced a whole lot more temptations than I did. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, then my son was born, <laughs> when he was born, my daughter was 18 and so, another generation sure. here. I got two generations of kids. Yeah. And things were even worse in his generation. And, mm. and I think that's when things began to change. The parents, the parents seemed selfish, but they seemed to be caught up in their own world. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of them were doing drugs. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what it was. I think in my daughter's generation, a lot of them got involved in drugs. They had kids mm -hmm. who grew up seeing that, mm -hmm. some of them got involved in drugs. Um, and it just seemed to be a, a thing that you passed on or something. And mm -hmm. I, I think today some of our parents live in a world where they're still growing up. They've got kids and they're still growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the abortion thing, back to Chris Campbell, of course it was illegal at that time. He yeah. was always getting arrested for it. Mm -hmm. When I started selling real estate, 
he had died and his house was up for sale. And I had this couple who wanted to see the house. And so I told them the story as we got there. Mm -hmm. I said, I think this was the house where he performed abortions. Mm -hmm. But when we got back there, went upstairs, and sure enough, went back this hallway into this room where there's a light overhead. Mm -hmm. And it was all white. And there were metal cabinets on the wall. And you could almost envision a hospital bed sitting mm -hmm. right in the middle under this light. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was verified that, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what he was doing. Yeah. Well, I think abortion has affected us in some way, too, now that it's free and legal. and I, You know, you hear stories. Of course, they're anecdotal, but you know, I've had people say, so-and-so's daughter went to school, went and got an abortion, and came home, and the parents never knew. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's changed attitudes in parents. I, I, my sister and I always say that Mom had a real gift, but I think her gift was that she loved us. And I hope I had that gift because I loved my kids. And sometimes I'll say, you know, did you have a happy childhood? Were things okay? And, yeah, Mom, it was really good. And if I made mistakes, that wasn't one of them. I did love my kids. Mm -hmm. I still do. And, and, they, and they my grandchildren, it. too. And they knew it. I hope they knew it. <laughs> Well, My youngest daughter and I used to have a few go-arounds, but <laughs> I think she knows I love her. Yeah. Well, you knew you were loved. Yeah, but that makes a difference. When you know you're loved, you know how to give love. Right. That's what's missing in a lot of our society. You know, people have fallen away from church, and I know there are people who say there is no God. Well, even if there isn't a God, it's a good way to live. I happen to believe there is a God, but... Mm -hmm. Even if you took all that out of it, it's still a good way to live. And people don't take their kids to church. When I was young, on Sunday morning, the whole community was in church, pretty mm -hmm. much. And this is the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. Started to dwindle in the 60s, I will say, especially with the men. But most of the kids were in church. Mm -hmm. A lot of the parents were in church. Now, that, I think, set us apart a little bit, too, because my mother took us to church. She didn't send us. Mm -hmm. And some people did send their mm -hmm. kids to church. And you can't send your kids to church. That's right. That would be advice. Yes. Um, I guess I should go to the advice, huh? It, it needs to be a family event. It does. Yes. I think family should be closer. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's the families falling apart, I think, that's damaging all of society, not just Carroll County, but mm -hmm. all of society. Mm -hmm. It's so much harder now when you think about um, young people getting started today. Um, when you were getting out and when you had, um, say, gotten out of high school, you, you could get a job and the money that you made would go uh, quite a bit further than the money that young people are making today go. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, when I was getting out of high school, around that time, when you turned 18, you were expected to go to work, mm -hmm. get married, join the Army. Yeah. You know, you didn't hang around your parents' house till you were 35. Right. <laughs> so that's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, I realize it's a little harder for people now. I guess if, you know, when I, well, one thing, I believe that all, all young people should get jobs when they're 16 part-time, not, mm -hmm. not quit school mm -hmm. or anything like right. that. But I think they need that experience. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't need the money, which I think they ought to earn their own money at mm -hmm. that point, but I think they need to, uh, to appreciate I, uh, what they have rather than just have it given to them. It, I think I taught my kids a work, work ethic. You know, my father taught me a work ethic. My mother did too. I mean, mm -hmm. she, just because she stayed home doesn't mean she didn't work. That's I right. used to think she was a terrible housekeeper until we all grew up, and, and I went back one day, and our house was clean, and I thought, oh my yeah. gosh, we did that. <laughs> I didn't realize we were the ones messing it up. <laughs> but she was a good housekeeper. Mm -hmm. You just can't keep up with six kids. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, what was it? oh, I think kids should go to work when they're 16. And I don't necessarily think that everybody should think they have to go to college. I think mm -hmm. that's a misconception we have in our society. And one of the things that... I think is pretty sad is a lot of schools have eliminated the home economics program. Mm -hmm. um, at Carroll County we still have somewhat of a, of a program, but when I was in school, when you, had, when you went to home ec, you learned how to cook, mm -hmm. 
how to set the table, you learn table manners, you learn how to budget your food, and you learn how to sew. I mean, you learn things that you really, and even if you have a full-time job today, you still got things at home you have to do. That's right. But a lot of young people don't know it, so I, I think that they should learn those things. Mm -hmm. As I said, I don't think everybody should think that they have to go to college. That's something that they're kind of pushing on everybody. Now, the community college does have programs that are outside of just what mm -hmm. you would consider book learning, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, but I think everybody should learn a skill, no matter you know, you should work to your ability. Right. Um, and I know that some people's abilities are limited, and we need all facets of society. Absolutely. You know, we need people who are willing to do or able to do jobs that other people don't want mm -hmm. to do or, mm -hmm. or can't do. So sure. we, need, we need people of all educational levels. It's, we don't need to be a society where everybody is a brain person, you know, where they've all got degrees and, and PhDs and they're always telling everybody else what to do. We need all facets. Exactly. Um, but if you've got ability, I think you should use it. I don't think you should. I don't think you should sit on anything. I think you should take advantage of the talents and abilities that you have, and share them with others. Um, so I would say, if you're getting out of school, get a job and don't be afraid to work. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times your jobs will help you decide where you want to go to because. Absolutely. You can have a whole bunch of different kinds of work. I mean, you don't have to stay at the same job mm -hmm. forever. And you can learn a whole bunch of different skills and sometimes figure out what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you should think it's too late to go to school if you didn't go. You know, when I was in school, usually if you had a little bit of money, they sent you to college. And if you didn't, they sent you to Black and Decker. You know, it's that kind sure. of thing. Yeah. And it's not true anymore, mm -hmm. which is a good thing mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people who can't afford to go to school, but who have the ability. Yeah. And I think they should, you know, pursue that. Mm -hmm. But I think, too, that <coughs> I think women should really stop and think about being homemakers more. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've been in and out of the workforce. Mm -hmm. Now, when I married my second husband, I didn't really have to work, and that's when I was able to go back to school. Sure. But, um, I work now because I have no more children at home, and both my daughters moved far away, so I don't have grandchildren to, to look after. And fortunately, they, they take care of their kids. Mm -hmm. And my mother always said, if you don't take care of your kids when you're young, if you don't take care of your kids, you're going to end up taking care of your grandchildren. <laughs> There's a lot of wisdom there. Um, but they, they do well. They take care of their own families. Um, but I don't think that you should ever feel that it's too late to go because mm -hmm. I went back and actually I, I ended up going on partial, a partial scholarship. When I got finished at Carroll, I couldn't afford to go to Western Maryland. <laughs> and so I, my plan was to go down to Towson. And my son was young at the time and he didn't want me to go down to the city. He said, Mom, please don't go there. Please, please don't go there. So I, he was the kind who worried and he would worry himself till he got migraines. Ooh. And then he'd be in bed for days. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I said, okay, I'll tell you what. If I can get a scholarship for Western Maryland, then I'll go there. So I got a scholarship. So you don't lose it, you know. Right. So it's no use to think, yeah. oh, I'm too old, I can't do it. Right. So that's why I ended up going there. And of course, till I graduated, I really, I didn't want to be a full-time teacher anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I just started substituting, and I like that. Good because I don't have to make lesson plans. Mm -hmm. And if I have some bad kids, chances are I'm not going to see them for a week or two. <laughs> so it's not something I have to deal with every day. So it sounds like you're an advocate of lifelong learning. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I can't get enough of books, yeah. my goodness. I don't have enough time to read all the books I want right. to read and do all the other things I want to do. Yeah, good for you. Well, Jeanette, I want to thank you again for taking the time to okay, uh, come and share took your too story. Much of your time. You oh. did not take too much of my time. It was quite enjoyable, and I really appreciate you coming. And as I said earlier, you are welcome to come back any time that you want to share a story with us. Okay. Thank you so very much. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Have a great day. Thanks.